All right, so I feel like I'm really far away this time, but that's whatever. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm too far. Okay, this is gonna have to do. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Land of the Lustrous, volume five, Curse the Sun. I love these covers, by the way, they're so pretty. I just love all the colors. Honestly, this is one of my favorite manga covers that I own. Well, not this specifically, but just like the series Land of the Lustrous, because all the covers are kind of like this. Although I think this one's probably one of the better ones, even though they're all good. Also in the spine, if you look, all of them have this little, oh my gosh, please tell me you can see that. <sighs> the freaking sun. Okay, you can kind of see it. All of them have a crystal gem. Well, sorry, shout out to Steven Universe. All of them have a gem like this, and they're all pretty cool. I just think that's a cool little detail. Okay, so anyways, I wanted to read Land of the Lustrous, and I'm starting with volume five. Well, I've already read volume one through four, but volume one through four is almost exactly the same as the anime. So if you ever wanted to get into the Land of the Lustrous, you could just watch the anime. Unless you're the type of person that prefers to read manga. I'm not, honestly. I'd rather watch the anime of something than read the manga, unless the anime is like bad. I don't think there's any manga that I prefer over the anime that I've actually read slash watched. But anyways, if you wanted to get into the... But actually, I don't even know... I'm honestly not 100% sure what volume 5 covers. I guess the back or the... Yeah, I guess the back of the manga will tell me. Well, I don't know. The last volume ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Actually, I don't... You know what? The thing is, I haven't watched Land of the Lustrous in a while, so I don't even remember how the anime ended, but it did end on a weird cliffhanger. It ended before the story was about to take a turn, I think. And I was actually really excited to see where it would go, and I was hoping for a season two, but it's been a few years and still nothing. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Maybe someday, but who knows. I don't even know if I should explain what Land of the Lustrous is about. I guess, okay, just a quick little brief summary. So Land of the Lustrous is about these rock people. They're not humans. They're made of crystal... Why do I keep saying crystal? They're made of different types of gems and they live on an island together with this man. I'm not really sure. He's not, it doesn't seem like he's a human being, but I don't know. Anyways, they all live on an island together and they all have their own little different daily tasks that they have to do, but they also have to go out on patrol because every, I wouldn't say they're constantly under attack, but they're constantly under the possibility of an attack from these beings called the Lunarians. And they're kind of like these cloud people that float from, well, they just appear out of the sky and they come down and attack them and they break the different gems and take them with them to the moon. So they have to have patrols out just to make sure like to fight them off. And that brings us to our main character Phosphophyllite. So Phosphophyllite is a lot weaker than all of the other gems and because of that they're not able to really fight because if they do they'll just break so they won't accomplish anything and they'll just get taken up to the moon. So one day they're fine they're actually given a task. So this whole time they've kind of just been doing nothing and everybody kind of treats them like a little annoying. Well they treat them like they're kind of a nuisance like they're not they don't okay no one hates phosphophyllite but they are a little they tease phosphophyllite for being not helpful whatsoever and that does bother foss a little bit but anyways foss gets a job and that job is to record the different life on the island or something like that and then phosphophyllite meets this other gem well not meets they already know each other but phosphophyllite learns about cinnabar this other gem who's kind of in the same predicament they can't do anything except a little maybe a little bit worse actually because cinnabar produces this poison that's extremely dangerous for all the other gems and because of that they can't really be around them and on top of that oh so they basically just isolate themselves away from everybody and their job is to go out on night patrols because they can actually go out in the dark as the other gems aren't able to do that. Cinnabar's job is horrible because they're just completely isolated and the Lunarians don't actually attack at night or at least they've never attacked at night before so they're just wasting their time basically and Fossil thinks that's a hor thinks that's a horrible fate and wants to try to find some other thing that Cinnabar can actually do instead of that. And that leads us to the series where a bunch of crazy stuff happens. So, yeah. And now I'm on volume five. The last volume... Okay, spoilers for Land of the Lustrous. If you if you haven't watched the anime or you haven't read the manga, don't watch at this point, I guess. But the last volume, Foss decided that they were going to try to get some answers as to what the heck the Lunarians are and what their relationship is with Sensei. And I believe this... I'm guessing that the rest of this is going to be covered in the anime or is already covered in the anime, but I want to see how it's different because I heard that the manga and the anime do have some differences. So that's kind of why I'm reading this because I also I just didn't want to start from like a random point in the manga. I'd rather just start from the beginning because people recommended that too. It, honestly, a part of the reason like this is a part of the reason I even started collecting manga. But yeah, I guess we'll be back with an update. I don't even know what's going to happen in this. I assume that the anime already covered this material, but I want to see how it's different. Anyways, I'll be back with an update. <laughs> 
Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm stupid, this is not my introduction. All right, hey guys, I'm back with an update. Okay, so I read Land of the Lush, well, I didn't finish it. I'm not finished with volume five yet, but this is an update. I got about halfway through the book. So I wanted to talk about what I've read so far. And then I guess, okay, spoilers. I don't think this really needs to be said, but this there are gonna be spoilers in this video. This is volume five after all, so I'm gonna be spoiling, not spoiling, but if you haven't watched Land of the Lustrous or read the books, then probably read that before watching this. Anyways, actually everything I've read up to this point, so this is going to be kind of a cutoff point, but everything I've read so far has been t material that was adapted into the anime, except I did get to a point where it started to kind of branch off in the manga a little bit like things are a little bit different right now actually it's not that it's different it's that it seems like events were cut and i heard that that's how it happened in the anime that they sort of rearranged things so i'm guessing what happens at the end of the anime is going to happen in the manga too but it's just going to happen later possibly at the end of this volume i don't know but anyways about what i read so like i said this stuff was adapted into the anime so if you've watched the anime then you've already seen this but uh, basically, these last few chapters have been kind of fleshing out some of the characters a bit more, specifically Yellow Diamond, Zircon, Alexandrite, and Rutile. Sorry, I had to think of their names for a second. Also, on top of that, we get a new character, Pad... Oh gosh, I have a really hard time pronouncing this. I have to hear it. I have to actually hear it to know how to pronounce it. I don't know, like Pad Parad Paradash? Pad Paradash? I don't know. Anyways, we get a new character with them. So... Oh my god, no, I need to figure out how to pronounce it. Okay, so a video I watched pronounced it as Pad Paradja, so I'm just gonna say it like that. So anyways, Pad Paradja is basically one of the oldest gems, and Pad Paradja was actually Rutile's partner, but because their body is different they were born with a body full of holes and that actually contributes to this condition that they have that they're not able to stay conscious so rutile spends a lot of time well rutile pretty much spends all of their time when they're not helping out others to try to fix pad paracha by filling their body with filling the holes in their body and hopefully i guess finding something compatible with them so they can just stay fully conscious and they've been doing this for years like i don't think it says exactly how long but rutile says that they've done this 300,000 times and the last time that Pat Paracha was actually awake was 200 something years ago so yeah that's kind of what they've devoted their entire life to which is pretty crazy and it also like I said it does give us more insight into Rutile a little bit or I guess give us more background for them. And this quest and this quest to save Pad Paracha is also the reason that Rutile has actually become a doctor. At least in the sense that they've gained a lot of knowledge on this quest to save Pad Paracha. So we actually get to meet Pad Paracha. I'm I'm getting so sick of saying their name. And Foss basically tries to ask for some advice on the whole sensei mistrust thing. And Pad Paracha basically tells them and Pad Paracha basically tells Foss that if they do find out whatever is going on, like the truth behind whatever is going on, it's going to change their whole world. So keep that in mind pretty much. And that's it. And then Pad Paracha unfortunately falls asleep. I kind of wonder if we're ever going to see them again. I'm not really sure. Because I feel like whenever there's a story about someone devoting their entire life or just spending so much time trying to save somebody, usually a lot of characters tell them to stop. And it kind of seems like whatever they're doing is not healthy. It's kind of ruining their life. Not ru- Okay, that sounds a little dramatic. But in Rutile's case, I guess they're spending so much time doing this that they're not really getting a whole lot of sleep. Like when Pad Paracha actually wakes up, Rutile immediately falls asleep. Well, not immediately but after having a slight like just talking to Foss for a little bit Rutile just falls asleep so anyways what I'm saying is I wonder if Rutile's ever gonna stop doing this or I don't know we're gonna have to see so in the next chapter we actually see that Zircon has teamed up with Bort at Foss's request well Foss requested in a previous chapter that different gems partner up with Bort so they can get better fighting skills so now it's Zircon's turn this is something I'm curious to see how it develops because with Diamond and Bort, we saw that Diamond was a little insecure and actually not being Bort's partner kind of made them feel not great. So I'm curious how that's going to affect Yellow Diamond and Zircon. They have a different relationship anyway. They're way more close and they're a lot more friendly with each other. And this actually leads Bort to tell Zircon that Zircon's weakness is that they're too attached to Yellow Diamond and that they're worried. They're too concerned with Yellow Diamond's well-being to the point where they don't fight with their full strength because they're so they're more concerned with 
defending Yellow from, you know, being taken by the Lunarians. And Yellow Diamond personally doesn't want to team up with Zircon anymore because the last time they had a- the last time Zircon and Yellow Diamond had an encounter with the Lunarians, Zircon kind of threw themselves in Yellow Diamond- or Zircon threw themselves in front of the arrows to protect Yellow Diamond and they ended up getting hurt. And Yellow Diamond's whole thing is that the reason that they're still alive- the reason that they're the old- not alive because the gems can't die. The reason that they've been around so long is because they run away. Yellow Diamond's philosophy is pretty much live to fight another day. So if things get really bad, they can just run, which is kind of easy for them anyway, because they're really fast. But obviously, if Zircon's thing is protect Yellow Diamond, because I care about them, and Yellow Diamond's thing is protect myself, then that's kind of an issue. Also during this chapter, Zircon actually goes to Foss for some advice, because Bort isn't actually talking to Zircon, and we get a little moment between the two. And Foss tells Zircon that they actually miss how they used to be, which is really sad, because Foss has changed so much. And for the next chapter, we actually learn more about Alexi or Alexandrite or wh I forget what Ale Alexandrite wants people to call them because I feel like this, the nickname that they give them is just inconsistent. Like I've heard Lexi, Alexi, Alexandrite, Alex, there's just a lot. But anyways, so Foss goes to Alexandrite because Foss is of course trying to learn more about the Lunarian. So why not go to the expert? And we actually get a little bit of Alexi's backstory. So the reason that they're so interested in Lunarians and the reason that they are thinking about them constantly constantly. A long time ago, they actually lost their partner to the Lunarians. It seems like a lot of people here have lost their partner and that sort of motivated their actions, like with Rutile. I mean, Pad Paraj is still there, but you know, Rutile's whole life is devoted to trying to get them back up. Foss changed so much after Antarcticite. Antarcticite? Oh gosh. I don't remember how to say their name, but after they, you know, got taken. And now we're getting the same story with Alexandrite. So yeah, the reason that they're so devoted to this whole Lunarian thing is because they want to keep that hatred fresh in their mind. But yeah, I've really liked these chapters so far because I just like how we get more insight into the other characters. For the most part, we've mostly just gotten stuff with Foss, obviously main character, Diamond, and Cinnabar. And I mean, we've obviously seen the other characters a lot, and we've seen them, how they interact with the other gems, but we don't get much into their history, which I, that's why I really like these chapters. So it's at this point where the anime kind of cuts off. The events that play out in the manga are different from the anime, so I'm just gonna leave that for the next update. I guess when I finish this, I'll talk about exactly what happens, but if you haven't watched the anime, no, even if you have watched the anime, if you don't want to be spoiled at all and you want to get into the manga then I suggest you stop watching at this point because everything after this is like manga material that hasn't been adapted but if you're curious about what happens then I'm going to talk about it in the next update so anyways that's it for now all right I am back with an update I'm not in my car right now as you can see um sorry the lighting is so bad I just I want to get this over with and I don't want to record outside because right now it's super hot so anyways I'm back with an update so I finished reading volume 5 of Land of the Lustrous so I'm going to go ahead I just want to reiterate by the way everything I say after this point is stuff that didn't happen in the anime so if you've only seen the anime and you want to read the manga but you don't want to be spoiled well first off I guess if you want to like jump straight into the manga you can probably just start with volume five i read people people said that i've seen people recommend on reddit that you should like read the manga so that way you can kind of get a feel for the style honestly you probably should i think i've gotten used to it already so i don't really think about it too much but anyways but if you want to just like get straight into the story just start with volume five because everything before this was anime material or material that was covered in the anime but now we're getting into the stuff that wasn't in the anime and is manga only so spoilers all right i know i just said that this stuff wasn't in the anime but technically Technically this part kind of was. So so Foss tries to communicate with the Lunarians and basically they grab one of the Lunarians the way that you know how the Lunarians are where there's just like a bunch of these cloudy people all in a little thing in a bigger cloud. Well basically Foss grabs one and starts choking it trying to ask it questions. Well I don't think they're trying to choke them but that's kind of what is happening. And the Lunarian kind of makes some sounds but then the Amethyst twins show up and kill it. So unfortunately Foss's attempt to communicate kind of fails, but oh well. And that's what I mean when I say that the manga is a little bit different. This is one of the changes. So in the anime, well I guess technically the anime is the thing that made the change, but in the anime Cinnabar is the one that stops. In the anime Cinnabar is the one that defeats the Lunarian and helps Foss out, but that doesn't happen here. Instead it's the Amethyst twins. So after that happens, Foss goes to the library to do some more research. That's when a new character is introduced, Ghost Quartz. So Ghost Quartz is the librarian, and they didn't always used to be the librarian, but 
Ever since their partner got taken away, they've taken up their duties, their partner being Lapis Lazuli. But Ghost Quartz tells Foss that they found some kind of war diary, and while this is going on, and while this is going on, there's some silly little shenanigans going on outside with Zircon trying to brush Bort's hair, and Foss is kind of just enjoying the moment until they spot Sensei, and that's when their expression kind of changes. So it's, which is a little depressing because before everyone, like Foss really admired Sensei a whole lot, but ever since just everything that's happened with the Lunarians has made Foss really suspicious of them. And then Ghost Zircon, oh my gosh. For some reason, I keep calling Ghost Quartz Ghost Zircon. I have no idea why. Also, I, you know what? I totally forgot to mention this, but Ghost Zircon, see, there we go again. Ghost Quartz is actually on the cover. I, you know, I never even realized, like, I didn't know who this was, but I've seen future volumes of this manga and there are so many characters that I don't even recognize, so I guess we're gonna get new people soon. Ghost Quartz says, I'll just read exactly what they say. So while Foss is staring at Sensei, wondering whether or not Sensei is showing his true self, I guess, Ghost Quartz says, you never can tell, can you? So it seems like Ghost Quartz is maybe also suspicious of Sensei, which to be fair, Cinnabar did say that everybody knows that he's hiding something, but they just kind of choose to believe in him, I guess. So after that happens, three black spots show up in three different locations, and Sensei has the groups split up. So Daya, Bort, so after so after that happens, three black spots show up in three different locations, and Sensei splits the group up. So Diamond goes with Yellow Diamond and Benito, or Benitoite, I think, is their gem. I feel like this is also a new character, I'm not really sure. Bort goes with Zircon, and Sensei is gonna go off on his own, but Foss demands that they go with him. And kind of a dramatic scene, honestly, which is, becomes really funny when it turns out that Ghost Quartz was actually following Foss that entire time. It's honestly hilarious, I'll definitely put up the panels on screen. So. Apparently when three spots show up in the sky, the Lunarians... Okay, so also Sensei has noticed that Foss has taken an interest in the Lunarians, so I don't know if Sensei is aware that Foss is very suspicious of him. I'm not really sure. So they talk about the spots and what it means when three show up. Basically, when three show up, when one of them is killed, the other two retreat, and it's a trap meant to lure gems to them, and then I guess they just take the gems. Something like that. I explained that really poorly. But the strategy is to have, is to instead of kill them, lure them to Sensei's location where he'll take them all out at once. So Bort and Zircon are doing a pretty good job of luring their Lunarian, but Benito, Yellow, and Diamond are struggling. And honestly, I love these three. They have such ridiculous antics. And a part of me was wondering if Yellow, Diamond, and Diamond were actually a team now since Bort and Zircon are a team. But I guess not. So Benito says that their airheaded nature is the reason that they're not a team, pretty much, or is the reason that Sensei doesn't pair them up. So I don't know if that means that they're currently currently paired up. Honestly, I don't even know what they've been doing. It kind of just seems like they've been doing their own thing. But yeah, the Lunarians are just targeting Benito and Benito is just annoyed because the diamonds, you would think they'd be better, more valuable targets, but apparently not. But Benito accidentally deflects one of the arrows back at the Lunarian and takes it out. And instead of the Lunarians retreating, they, it seems like they, well, they do retreat, sort of. It seems like they just enter a, into a black ball instead of running away or flying away, I guess. I guess. So back to Foss, Sensei, and Ghost Quartz. They're just watching this thing form into a black ball, and Foss is kind of questioning why Sensei is not doing anything, and they themselves ask if they should just attack it, but he insists that they just stay there not doing anything. And Foss, again, because Foss is so suspicious of Sensei, they, kind they question Sensei's decisions and ask if he's just gonna let it get away, even though one of the taken gems might be in there. And then we get this kind of tense scene between the two, and Ghost Quartz, for some reason, jumps onto the ball. Also, so I didn't, I don't think I mentioned this, but Ghost Quartz actually uses a scythe, which is kind of odd because everybody up to this point has used a sword. So I don't know what that's about. But yeah, Ghost Quartz jumps onto the ball and checks out what's inside to see if anybody's in there. And then the black ball, actually each of the black balls had this like other black shape above them. And suddenly hands appear from outside of that thing and grab Ghost. And Foss is about to act, but they question whether or not Sensei's gonna do something. So instead of acting, they kind of just stop and wait. And that's when Sensei breaks apart a part of his his arm it like it's almost like he pulls off some of his skin but it seems like his arm is made out of some kind of gem so what the heck is sensei then but he pulls parts of him off and throws it at the black spot and is able to take it out saving ghosts and then he uses his power to take out the remaining lunarian so foss asks about sen what sensei just did and he tells them that he takes off little pieces of himself to attack but he asks that foss keep it a secret from the others because he doesn't want anybody to attempt the same thing and poor foss is just dumbstruck and retiles 
was putting ghosts together and Fosk asks if there are any other pieces other than ghosts, but apparently not. So they suspect that Sensei just sorted out the pieces before giving them over to Rutile. Also, I'm sorry that this is basically just a play by play of everything that happens, but this, this is just so, just so much is going on that I want to see what happens and I just want to talk about everything that happens. I'll try not to say every single event that happens in the future, but it's just hard not to. So Foss tries to, so Foss is reflecting over the events of what just happened and is honestly really confused as to what is going on with Sensei and why he would hurt himself to fight the Lunarians that he seems to have some kind of connection with. Who knows? But Ghost is successfully put together and Ghost thanks Foss for trying to help them, even though they didn't, but they saw that they were reaching out to do something. But in the end, it was Sensei that saved them, but still they're thankful. But Foss feels guilty because the truth is they just watched and waited for Sensei to act instead of acting themselves. And then we get a couple of panels of Sensei doing this thing. I'm honestly not sure where he is or what he's even doing. It seems like he's healing himself. I don't know if he's putting the pieces that he threw back together. I'm not really sure what's going on. But he says that he's sleepy, so I don't know how that's connected to all of this. I guess maybe... I'm not... Honestly, I have no idea. Anyways, so Foss is feeling guilty and also just feeling really isolated for withholding all of these secrets. And they end up running into Benito, who's also feeling really bad about themselves since they accidentally mess up the plan by taking out one of the Lunarians. Also, Foss is about to tell Benito something. What it is, I'm not 100% sure, but Ghost shows up and actually, and hands over the war diary that they mentioned before, which turns out to be a jellyfish log. So Ghost reminisces about Lapis and then mentions that they have another crystal inside of them or another gem inside of them and that that gem sometimes make them, and that gem sometimes makes them do weird things, but they would listen to Lapis. I don't know. I'm not really sure what that's about or how that's going to be relevant in the future, but it's really odd. Or I don't know if it's odd or if it's just I don't really understand it. A part of me wonders if this is supposed to be some kind of parallel to something in real life. I'm honestly not 100% sure. Okay, change of scenery once again. So after Ghost Quartz tells Foss about the whole crystal thing, they ask or they tell Foss that they'll help in any way that they can and Foss kind of just stares at them for a second like thinking should I tell them? But Foss still feels kind of guilty about everything that's been going on and just doesn't feel great so they decide not to drag them into the mess that they're currently getting themselves into. So Foss is feeling isolated and alone and then suddenly they remember Cinnabar. So they go see Cinnabar and Foss asks Cinnabar for help. So Foss asks Cinnabar for help and tells them that they need they have a job specifically for Cinnabar that only they can help with and Cinnabar is like okay this doesn't sound like fun though and you said it was going to be fun and that's when Foss is, it kind of just opens up and tells them exactly what the job is and how they've been feeling and why they need their help. But Cinnabar asks Foss what they're going to do if it turns out that Sensei has done something unforgivable, as they put it. And Foss doesn't actually have an answer. So Cinnabar tells them that they aren't going to be able to help if they don't have that. And Foss decides to come back later. But it seems like Cinnabar does kind of want to team up. So, so I'm excited to hopefully see Cinnabar again. It feels like they are not in this manga a lot. <laughs> I mean, they have appearances here and there, but it just feels like it feels like they need to be around more, or they're going to be around more, but I don't know. We're gonna have to see. And I really like Cinnabar as a character, so I'm really, I hope that, I just want them to be around more, and I hope they find happiness, and I want to see more. I feel like there's, we have, there's sides to Cinnabar that we haven't really seen, so anyways. So Ghost Quartz asks Foss to team up with them for some reason, and they say that they feel like they're the reason Lapis hasn't returned, and they're hoping that maybe by changing themselves, they can make some kind of difference. So they go out on patrol and a Lunarian shows up. So Foss takes this opportunity to hopefully communicate with it. So they tell Ghost to just stand back and watch for a second. But if things go bad, have my back. So finally, 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 this is the perfect opportunity to potentially communicate with the Lunarian. Last time the Amethyst twins showed up and took out the Lunarian, which ruined things. But this time it's just Foss and Ghost. And Ghost already knows the plan. So although with that being said, Ghost sometimes acts in ways that they don't mean to because of the crystal inside them. But but regardless of all of that, Foss goes up to the Lunarian and watches and waits. And Foss gets hit with an arrow and that's where the volume ends, which is really okay. I don't even know if you can call that a cliffhanger. It kind of is. I want to see what happens next. So yeah, that's volume five. Oh, so yeah, that's volume five. I'm sorry that this was really just a play-by-play -play of all the events that happened, but I'm really, I like this chapter or I like this volume a lot because I like that we get to see 
or learn more about some of the characters that have been around for a while, like Rutile, um, Alexandrite, I don't think has been around for that long, but they've been there. Plus we get some more stuff with Bort taking on different, not apprentices, but teaming up with different gems. That's pretty cool. And we also get some fun interactions between the characters, like Diamond and Yellow Diamond are just really funny. I'm actually really glad that they're making a lot of appearances. Well, not Diamond. Diamond was really in the beginning a lot, but Yellow Diamond has been, was around a lot in this volume specifically. It was kind of interesting. Also, I forgot to show it off. I At the beginning of every volume, there's always this color page full of, um, it shows the characters and it's so cool. And it gives these like, I just like it because it has all the characters like doing something. Well, I mean, they're all just kind of walking, but they have little descriptions that tell you just a tiny bit about them. And it tells you their hardness level as well. But you get a lot of personality just from these pages alone. Because as you can see, Cinnabar is way over here, kind of isolated off to the side. It's kind of nice to see Cinnabar that, again, though, because I don't even know if they were in the other volumes. Then we have Foss who looks Poor Foss just looks like they've, they're so serious right now. I'm not sure why Benito is facing away from, I don't want to say the camera, but facing away from us. It's kind of odd. But anyways, I just think it's cool that we have this. So yeah, like I was saying though, I do really like this volume. I just, I love Land of the Lustrous. I just want to see where it goes. The story is getting interesting. I'm curious about Sensei's relationship with the Lunarians. I feel like a lot of progress, or not really much progress is made on that front in this volume though. We did learn a weird secret about him though about the whole like breaking parts of them off to throw at or to use as an attack that was odd it still makes me wonder what sensei actually is he's not a human but is he a gem or something i don't know it's weird ghost quartz is interesting i'm kind of curious how much they're gonna play a part in the story they're they seem really random i wasn't expecting to get a new character like that usually with characters they're just sort of introduced actually i don't even know if that's true i feel like there are characters in this manga that are just there but they don't really have like an introduction necessarily like benito i I don't know if Benito has been in any volume other than this one, but it's like they were always there with us, if that makes sense. Other characters, obviously, not really like Pad Parasha or Pad. Well, I already forgot how to say that. Like they, that by the way, they're a cool character. I wouldn't mind seeing them again, but I'm not really sure if that's going to happen because it just seems like seems like one of those things where it's like if they come back, does that mean that's inhibiting? the growth of Rutile, I'm not really sure. I feel like if we're doing a real life situation, of course it'd be nice to see, like if I was in Rutile's shoes, if I was in any of the other character's shoes, I'd, of course I'd be like, okay, I want this character to come back. But if you're reading it from, you know, a character perspective or like a storytelling perspective, it's like, uh, wouldn't it be better for Rutile to actually move on from this whole thing? But I don't know. I I don't know what else to say either, actually. Like I said, Ghost Quartz is interesting. Uh, I like Finito. They're pretty funny. I feel like they're, I mean, they're mostly just comic relief in this volume but they had some really funny moments with yellow and diamond or yellow and dia whatever you want to call them like honestly i think my favorite moment of the whole manga was when i think my favorite moment of the whole volume was was when Benito accidentally reflected one of the arrows and they're both just kind of staring like, uh, at the Lunarian as it goes down. I also really like the panel where Ghost Quartz tells Foss that they've been there the whole time when Foss asks where they came from. And it's just really goofy because like previously Foss had this whole dramatic panel just staring down Sensei. And then it just looks really silly in a completely different context, knowing that Quartz or Ghost was there this whole time. Okay, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, I don't know. I'll definitely read volume six probably soon-ish, maybe. I have the volume already, so we'll see. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll be back another time. Okay, see ya.